Good afternoon to everybody. I am honored to welcome each and every one of you here today for this momentous occasion and celebration here in Osceola, Arkansas. Welcome to the official groundbreaking at Big River Steel for United States Steel's most advanced steel making facility in the world. I'm your host today. My name is Dan Brown. I'm the Senior Vice President of Advanced Technology Steelmaking and Chief Operating Officer of Big River Steel Works. On behalf of my U.S. Steel colleagues, and in particular the Big River Steel team, I am truly excited to be your host this morning at this tremendous milestone event. Today we are fortunate enough to have leaders of state and local government here, our business partners, and the community is around us that we operate in every day. We will hear from several of our special guests today and then officially break ground in front of you on this historic project. Before we get started though, I'd like to say a few words about the facility you're in, the current Big River Steel plant. As many of you already know, this current site is the most technically, technologically advanced steel making plant in North America. Big River Steel is also the first LEED certified plant in the United States, LEED standing for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. I want to thank everybody for their efforts over the years to get to that certification, but that's not where it stops. At U.S. Steel and Big River Steel, if you've ever met any of the employees, the leadership, everybody that makes steel here every day, no one ever stops in this facility. Everybody always tries to strive and improve to be the best. Last week, we hosted an audit team from Responsible Steel, and I can stand here and tell you today that we received conditional approval from Responsible Steel for certi certification as the very first steel company in North America to be accredited. The audit team interviews company experts, our Big River, Big River Steel leadership team, our employees and various stakeholders. The Big Rivers team continues to work hard every day. We accomplish more than most companies do every day, and we do things right from a business standpoint. We are also proud to operate here in Osceola as part of Mississippi County in Northeast Arkansas. After a hard day of work here, our employees go home. They go to their family and friends in Osceola, Mississippi County, and other communities across this region. Having strong and positive relationships within the community is not only good business, it's personal to every single one of us that work here. With the city of Osceola and greater Mississippi County region being so instrumental to our success, I want to thank all the elected officials and business leaders here today for their ongoing support of Big River Steel and United States Steel. I also want to reaffirm our continued commitment to invest in this community, not only from a financial standpoint, but by contributing our time and expertise from the employee workforce here. Today's event is particularly special thanks to many dignitaries that have joined us here this morning. When I call out your name, if you would please stand or wave from your seat to be recognized. Governor Asa Hutchinson. Dave Stickler, CEO of GPP. Laura Landro, CEO from Entergy. Leo Denault, Entergy. Commerce Secretary Mike Preston. From BNNSF Railroad, Colby Tanner. State Senator Dave Wallace. State Representative Monty Hodges. Our neighbor, our own mayor of Osceola, Sally Wilson. Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin. Attorney General Leslie Rutledge, 
Secretary of State John Thurston, Mississippi County Economic Development Cliff Chitwood. Can, go, can we give every one of those another round of applause? Thank you to each and every one of you for all of your hard work, your leadership, and your support. I speak for everyone here when I say it is truly appreciated from Big River Steel and United States Steel. But to get to this point today within United States Steel, it takes a phenomenal leader, an extremely strong leader, a strategic leader, and a leader who has a vision and is relentless in pursuit of taking the company to the next level and into the future. As your host this morning, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce the President and CEO of United States Steel, Dave Burrett. Thank you, Dan, and thanks everybody for being here. Isn't, isn't Dan the right choice to lead this organization? And Dan, thank you for those very kind remarks. I just wish some of them were deserved, so thank you very much. Also, as I, as I look at the organization here and the, the audience, I, I think to myself, Dan, I kind of said, let's keep this intimate. All I want here are the people that really made a difference to get us to where we are today. And guess what? That's all of you. You made the biggest difference because you worked together with us to make this happen. So let's give yourselves a round of applause. Now, Dan's thanked a lot of people. I'm not going to go through all 170 of the folks that are here, I think, on, on the list that got invited. And I'm, I'm sure there are a few that maybe even snuck in because this is such a special day for us here at U.S. Steel, putting in place the most technologically advanced mini mill, I'd say, dare I say, on the planet. Very, very exciting for us. And I know it didn't happen just overnight. We've had, through our 120-year history at U.S. Steel, a heck of a lot of ups and downs, and sometimes more downs than ups. But I can tell you, this is amongst our brightest spots in the history of the company. And I can say, unequivocally, our best days are ahead. We've been through a lot, no doubt. And with the last year, the landscape we find ourselves in, it's pretty remarkable. We had all-time record safety, all-time record environmental performance, all-time record quality, reliability, and yep, all-time record profitability. So we find ourselves a great, great time at U.S. Steel to invest in the future. But we're not without incredible challenges. We have a big carbon footprint, right? We, we've got to go green. We've got to become more environmentally friendly. We got a big capital budget, capital expenditures. We have some of our facilities that, that eat money, frankly, that have to be repaired and maintained. We call it sustainable capital. That's a big challenge for us too. We have carbon intensity, we have capital intensity, and we also have competitor intensity. And what we like to say is we gotta get to the future faster because we know we have competitors that are out there that frankly, they're better than what we are today but we're catching them and we're moving very fast. So what's, what's our solution? Well, well, what we like to say is we like to focus on our strengths. We, at U.S. Steel, we have the best mining assets in North America. We have the best finishing lines in North America. And right here, right now in Osceola, we actually have the best mini mill in North America with Big River Steel. And you know what? Yeah, it's impressive and it's gonna get better. It's gonna be better because of the folks here that are helping us with this groundbreaking and we're gonna to get to the future a lot, lot faster. We're gonna do things that others didn't think were possible with the new advanced high strength steels that we're making. It's going to be an incredible future for us. But again, I gotta I got give out a, a, a few thanks to the, 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 the folks here. 
um, my, my leadership team, not just Dan, but we have Rich Fruoff, our head of strategy, and Christy Breves, our CFO here, our head of financial planning and um, analysis, investor relations, and our communicators, John Ambler and the whole team that help pull a lot of this together. That's on our team, but all the people that you know, did the work getting us here. There's, there's Dave Stickler, who was involved from the beginning of Big River Steel, and we had some knockdown drag outs, penciled down, I think, at least once, right? Getting to it's where we are, but it, we found our way through that to get to today. And with the team at Big River, guys like Jim Bell and Tommy Kiefer and Adams and Beasley and Lenore Trammell, the list goes on. I'm sure I'm forgetting some folks. These are the people that know how to run mills, and they run them incredibly well. But we still wouldn't have been able to get here without the incredible help that we get from this community. You know, people often say, well, why are you coming to Arkansas? They love us here, and we love them. We got great partners, you know, Leo, Denault, and and, and Laura came in from Energy just to be here. They know how to make energy affordable and sustainable. And they're finding new ways to do that faster too. So thank you so very much for coming. And thanks so much for getting us to do this next uh, groundbreaking later, later today. Really appreciate it. The class one rail, B, uh, NSF. Colby, you're here over here on this side. Colby Tanner over here. Thank you so very much for what you've been able to do to make this possible as well, because with your partnership, it makes an incredible big, big, big difference for us. So we have a lot of people I'm sure that I'm going to forget to thank, but I want you to know that it's this whole partnership that comes together, all of you, that makes it possible for us to want to spend money in this great state of Arkansas. And that, of course, wouldn't happen without the great work of Mike Preston. Thank you, sir. And Governor Asa Hutchinson, heart goes out to you. I know there was a lot of heavy lifting that you did, but we are so pleased to be here in your state and grow better capabilities with you. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the podium. It's yours. Isn't he great? He happens to be a decision maker here, and he chose Arkansas. And Dave, I have something in response, and that is that Arkansas loves steel, and Arkansas loves U.S. steel. We're very proud of you being here and selecting uh, Mississippi County, Osceola, as your new home and the expansion that we've announced and that we're gonna break the ground on today. I think back, of course, in, in my time as a young boy uh, going to school and I loved history and I loved reading about the industrial age and the turn of the century. And of course, you studied Andrew Carnegie, you studied J.P. Morgan, Charles Schwab, Elbert Gehry, all a part of the original U.S. Steel. And then you think about what U.S. Steel has done through the years, building the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, the New Orleans Superdome, Chesapeake Bay Bridge, and the planes during World War II. America needs steel, and U.S. Steel produces the finest. And so to have U.S. Steel right here in Arkansas is full circle for me in terms of history, in terms of of a success story for our state. America relies upon what you produce. And the fact that you are looking to the future and making decisions quickly about uh, energy efficiency and about uh, reducing carbon emissions means that you're going to be on the forefront of technology and success and the important issues of our nation in the coming days. What does this mean for Arkansas? You probably could not uh, overstate uh, the impact that this investment has on our state. It is the largest economic investment in the history of Arkansas. It's 
$3 billion, 900 jobs. You've heard the story, but you think about what that means to the lives of individuals and our communities and even the spirit of Northeast Arkansas as we see this kind of success story in our community. And what this means for us is growth and economic opportunity for the next generation so our young people will have such great opportunities in a thriving industry with great paying jobs. And so I think about the leadership of U.S. Steel that sort of paints the picture for the future. We had our first meeting, Dave, in, on September 21, or September of last year. You think about that, September of last year, and here we are in February, they've gone through the permitting process, they've gone through the decision making, and they went through the competition with multiple other states, and we won. And you're here in a short amount of time. And I know you've recognized the partners, but I can't help say how important Entergy has been, uh, both Laura and Leo and your leadership, and what it means when we pull together uh, as energy providers, as a state, uh, as a prospect, and that we arrive at the solutions that are needed to win this project. And of course, energy is key to it. BNSF Radio, uh, radio, maybe not. Railroad, great partners with us as well. The decisions and the contributions you've made have been critical. And so I also finally want to thank the members of the Arkansas General Assembly. Would you all stand and be recognized, please? All the members of the Arkansas General Assembly. <laughs> Mike Preston and I, we had to go to the General Assembly and said we need to pass the extended uh, recycling credits. There was only four no votes. They're not going to come back, so don't worry about them. But uh, what a great partners uh, that uh, General Assembly has been uh, in this effort. And so this is an exciting time. I just want to be a part of it today. Look forward to the groundbreaking. And I want to thank uh, Mike Preston, uh, who I recruited from Florida, has done a great job for eight years and continues to uh, bring in projects like this. Mike. Well, thank you, Governor, and, and huge thank you to uh, U.S. Steel. Um, Governor, I wish you wouldn't have made the legislators stand. Now, seeing that many in one room makes me feel like an ALC meeting is about to break out and they're going to ask me about broadband or something. I'm just kidding, inside joke there, but uh, appreciate all the members of the legislature for really coming together. And as the governor demonstrated the timeline, just how quickly that that happened, that we were able to, starting in September, now to here we are today at um, February 8th, to put a shovel in the ground to have this done. It wouldn't be done without the teamwork. And anyone who's heard me speak about economic development, I talk about how it's a team sport. And we, we really all came together as a state to make this happen. We knew that U.S. Steel wanted to move quickly. They're a business, and we wanted to mirror what that business looked like, and we knew they had opportunities in front of them, and it was going to be speed that helped us to win this project, and the fact that we're able to get it done and make that happen. I saw uh, Becky Keough from the um, Arkansas Department of Environmental Quality. Her and her team worked so quickly to get the air permits done and everything taking, uh, taking place. Uh, obviously, the entire team at AEDC, who uh, many of them are here. I got the lights up here, so I can't point to everyone, but I know the team is here from AEDC who made this possible, who came together with Cliff Chitwood and his team in Mississippi County and the judge uh, and the mayor to make it happen. Obviously, BNSF and Entergy that you've uh, heard about. Uh, but I got to recognize my friend Dave Stickler and uh, all that he's meant to us and uh, the partnership and the friendship that we've had from uh, you know, bringing, just driving out here uh, this morning brought back a lot of memories of the first time we came out here and looked at this and it, it was a field. Uh, and to see where it is today is, is, is pretty humbling and pretty remarkable, but kudos to you and the entire GPP team for coming together with U.S. Steel to, uh, to make that happen. And I have to recognize, too, uh, uh, Dr. Shemwell from Arkansas Northeastern College. If it wasn't for the workforce that we have here and the folks that his college comes in and trains in day in and day out to provide the workforce that comes in and works in these mills and provides for these families, we wouldn't be able to do economic development. So as you can see, it is a team effort that allows us to get here and to allow us to get these projects done. So I just real quickly, a quick story. So 
Uh, I had an interview yesterday with a, um, a publication who was talking about workforce and workforce development. And they wanted to talk about the jobs of the future and technology and green jobs. And they were throwing a lot of questions at me and asking examples about, uh, you know, what are you doing for, for green jobs in, in Arkansas and technology jobs? And I said, the story is very simple. You can look at one company, and it's a great example of how it's done. Pay attention to the groundbreaking tomorrow with U.S. Steel. Because it is a technology company. It is a green company. It hits all of these. These are the jobs of the future. They're coming together, and to steal a line from my friend Dave Stickler, he says, we're a technology company that makes steel. So we are preparing for the future. The goal to have the carbon footprint down to zero by 2050, U.S. Steel is committed to that. These are green jobs. These are technology jobs. These are the jobs that are going to drive Arkansas for the next future and for a generation. We're here today to celebrate a generational project that we don't see too often. So that's why you have so many people who all came together to make this happen. So to U.S. Steel, congratulations. To Mississippi County, congratulations. But this is just the beginning. We've got years and years of work to do, and it's only going to go from here. So with that, I know we couldn't do this without our local partnership. Judge, I think you need no introduction in this building, but uh, since you've been judge, you've seen this county go from one of the top to the top steel producing counties in, in the entire country. So congratulations to you and your team. Please help me welcome Mississippi County Judge John. Oh, wait, no, wait, I'm getting off track. We're going to go. All right, my note said the judge next. So I talked about the legislature and what a partnership they would. Someone had to carry that piece of legislation through uh, the General Assembly. And our good friend, Dave Wallace, he made it happen. He got up there and explained the bill. And the reason that we get 35 votes in the Senate and not a single nail vote is because Dave Wallace was carrying it. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Dave Wallace. Boy, I sure am glad to be here today. What a great day for Mississippi County and Northeast Arkansas. You know, I grew up here. I made 60 cents an hour chopping cotton. I think it was maybe five or six years ago. <laughs> it was the only job we could find. And now, thanks to Big River Steel, Dave, thanks to U.S. Steel, now, our young men and young women, and you all have heard the numbers, but jobs in excess of $120,000 a year coming right here to Mississippi County. <laughs> Governor Hutchinson, thank you for your leadership. When you came here, you said you wanted to create jobs and buy gollies. You did it. Mike, thank you for everything you have done what great skills you have brought. Judge, Mayor Wilson, and I've lost one more person. Monty, Monty, thank you for all you've done. Monty Hodge has worked really, really good with us with all this. Folks, thank you. Enjoy being here, and, and uh, great day for Mississippi County. Thank you, Senator. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's, it's an exciting time. I'm extremely uh, excited to be here for this momentous, uh, groundbreaking celebration. Uh, thank the governor for being here and to Mike and to each and every one of you. You know, the, 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 the minister in me tells me that uh, the Bible sa tells us that we should leave an inheritance to a generation, generation. And that is what exactly what USDO will be doing for the families of the employees that work at this facility with these great paying salaries uh, right here in the Delta. I thank you for selecting Arkansas, U.S. Steel. I thank you for selecting Mississippi County. And I thank you for selecting District 55, now District 34, the best district in the state of Arkansas, <laughs> for making this generous investment. Uh, God bless you and I look forward to great things to come. At this time, now, we will introduce the great judge of Mississippi County, Judge John Allen Nelson.
Good morning. Now, right here at the beginnings of 2022 in Mississippi County, Arkansas, we're standing on the doorstep of a changing future. And today we gather alongside David Barrett to commemorate, to, to commemorate U.S. Steel's decision to put our, make our home their home. And as they begin to invest an additional $3 billion in yet another steel producing facility. We are partners with this endeavor and we are honored that Governor Asa Hutchinson, Mike Preston and the state of Arkansas have joined this momentous effort to be partners as well. Arkansas Northeastern College, the Blyville Gosnell Regional Airport Authority, and every mayor in Mississippi County has come together to play a vital role in this project. And together, we are establishing greatness. Together, in our common well-being, we are moving forward as Cliff Chitwood and the Great River Economic Development Foundation establishes the Work Here, Live Here program. We're the first county in the state of Arkansas to pass an economic development tax, and if we have worked hard to, to develop a plan to make this project a reality, along with others, such as our Cold, National Cold War Museum, the Mississippi River Bike Trail, and renovations to our courthouses. We are investing in our future as we come together to make changes in the face of Mississippi County. May God bless these efforts and guide us all as we embark on these opportunities ahead and I'd like to thank also Mayor Wilson for all of her efforts. She'll be our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Nelson. Governor, Mr. Burrett, Secretary Preston, Mr. Brown, Mr. Stickler, other dignitaries, guests, and friends, welcome to Osceola. We gather today to celebrate many things, many great accomplishments done and more to come. This morning, I wish to highlight and celebrate a unique partnership, a partnership that began seven years ago between BRS, the city of Osceola, and visionaries such as the late John Carrente and Mayor Dickie Kinnamore. A partnership that has grown and continues today with U.S. Steel. A partnership that will make a great company even greater and enable our town to renew, to grow, to prosper, and to become in reality what Osceola is in all of our hearts a home worthy to the people that live here. Times change, economies change, but steel alloy is lasting, just like United States steel. In this partnership, as it flourishes, so will this community. I wish to thank you for attending today, and now I'd like to introduce my good friend, Charles Landrum, with Representative Rick Crawford's office. Thank y'all very much. Thank you, Mayor Wilson. Uh, the Congressman, he can be here today, but he prepared a letter. Thank you for being here today. I wish I could be in Osceola to celebrate such an exciting occasion for Mississippi County Northeast Arkansas and our entire region. We have become a destination for steel investment by companies from across America because of the tireless work of so many. I want to highlight a few people for whom I'm appreciative. David Stickler, the Big River, Big River Steel team, David Barrett and the U.S. Steel team, Governor Hutchison, Mike Preston and his team at Arkansas Economic Development Commission, who are always pounding the pavement to recruit quality job creators to Arkansas. Senator Dave Wallace introduced legisl legislation in the state Senate to further Arkansas's investment package, which led to the legislature fully supporting this package. Judge John Nelson ensured Mississippi County 
was competitive to other states, Cliff Chitwood, Tamika J Jenkins, and the folks at Great River Economic Development Foundation always working hard to bring investment to our area. I'm proud to serve as vice chair of the Congressional Steel Caucus, which gives me the opportunity to re represent our robust and growing steel industry. I look forward to continuing that work alongside those mentioned today as we keep growing the steel industry in Northeast Arkansas. Thank you, Rick Crawford, a representative of Congress. And now, will Mr. Dan Brown please come up? Thank you. Thank you to all the speakers. If I could now ask for all the speakers to come back up here and participate in our ceremonial first shovel turn up on stage here. Thank you. Time yet? Okay. If you like. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Let's take a look at the screen here. The future starts now. Thank you everyone for what you've done to get us here and for what you will do
to make sure we have an incredible bright future together. Now let's all get back to work safely.